Hi, it's Morgan and welcome to The Dove's Nest. In today's video, I'm talking all about my control journal. Hi everyone and thanks for joining me today. As I mentioned in the introduction, baby step number three of the Fly Lady system is building a control journal. As I mentioned in previous videos, I am a plan out the details to perfection kind of person. And one of my favorite things to do is make lists. I love post-its, I love notebooks, I love writing down lists and keeping track of lists. Unlike most list makers, it's not the satisfaction of checking things off on the list that I love. It's just doing the brain dump to get the clutter out of my head and onto paper in an organized and neat fashion. I love lists. Now some of the ways that I incorporate these lists and writing things down to keep me organized are a family calendar. In our kitchen, we have a family calendar where every member of our family has a color. So it's color coordinated and every day everyone in our family can just look at the calendar, see what they have going on that day or what everyone else has going on that day. And I usually try to include our dinner meal plan as well. I also am a big fan of the calendar on my phone because I can set alarms and alerts and I can put things in the calendar and forward them to other members of my family again so that everybody kind of knows what's going on. I have color coordinated calendars for my photography business as well as for my family life, I will insert like a little graphic of that up here just so you can see what my daily calendar looks like. So you see, I am a big fan of keeping track of things, writing it all down so I know exactly what I need to do and when. And when I started the Fly Lady system, one thing I really appreciated was that she thought to include a control journal because one of my problems is I couldn't remember what I needed to do or when I needed to do it or figure out time in my day that I needed to do it because I was usually on my phone wasting a bunch of time and so I kept thinking, I don't have time to clean for an hour. And so I needed a special place to remember all of those things. Now enter my control journal. It's pretty simple. The Fly Lady recommends just having a three ring binder. If you don't have a three ring binder, you can totally use a notebook but you want something that's enclosing all of your notes and papers inside. So I strongly recommend getting a three ring binder and this just holds all of my routines and helps me to stay on track every day. If I get behind, I can simply open up to the next spot where I need to be and continue. I don't have to backtrack again progress, not perfection. So I am loving this control journal. It really is the brain of my house cleaning system. So let's talk about what you need to build your control journal. As I mentioned, you need a simple three ring binder. We always have these binders laying around the house between my business and my husband's businesses. Um, we have a ton. In my master closet declutter, you see that I actually decluttered five or six of these empty white binders from the top of our closet. We just have a ton of them. You can get them at the dollar store. They're super cheap. It doesn't need to be a huge investment. So you definitely want a three ring binder. You also want some sheet protectors. Everything in my binder is in sheet protectors. Now this is so that you don't have to check off your paper lists and print new ones or scratch it out. The sheet protectors act as sort of a dry erase board so that every day as you go through your systems and routines, you can take your next supply, which is a dry erase marker, and just check off the lists. Then at the end of every night while you're checking the calendar before bed, you can just take some Windex or some window cleaner or even some water, wipe down all of your sheet protectors, and then you're ready to start fresh the next day. The last thing I would include in your control journal are some binder tabs. Now you can't really see mine because my sheet protectors cover them, but there are binder tabs in here and that's just to help you separate the different sections of your control journal. In this chapter of her book, Sync Reflections, Marla says you don't have to see the top of the staircase in order to take the first steps. So when you're starting to build your control journal, it's not going to look anything like mine. Remember, baby steps, baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. Don't overwhelm yourself. As you're learning your baby steps and creating your daily habits and routines, maybe get started using some notebook paper and every time you start working on a new baby step or a new habit, 
add it to that notebook paper until you create a running list and then that notebook paper can go in your control journal. Eventually, your control journal will have all of your routines listed out and all of your zone cleaning and all of your weekly routines and then you can add those to sheet protectors into your control journal. It's a pretty simple system, but trust me, it helps so much. I'm to the point now where I carry this almost everywhere. I still use a diaper bag for my kids just because I need the space and I actually take this in my car or put it in my diaper bag if I need to. I love having it with me. So let's talk about what's in my control journal. So I just have a cover here. I will link it below. I actually found this from a blogger probably 10 years ago and um, I just re reprinted a new copy of the cover and stuck it in here. So the very first thing I have in my control journal is the Fly Lady's 11 Commandments. Now these are from her book. You can also find them on her website. And then on the back side, I just have a list of every member of my family and my extended family, everyone's phone numbers because you never know when you're gonna be somewhere and your phone dies and you don't have phone numbers and need to call someone because we have since passed the age of memorizing phone numbers. So I've got all of that listed down in case of emergencies. Next is my first tab. And what I have in my first tab, this is my block schedule. So this is kind of how I organize my day. This is not something that the fly lady says to include, but it's something that really helps me to stay on top of things. So I include it here. You can see every day I break down my day into one to three hour blocks. And then these are all the tasks that I need to get done in those blocks. Now, if you're interested in learning about this um, block system, I actually adopted this from Jordan Page at Fun Cheaper Free, and she has a whole video about it. So I will be sure to link that video in the description box below. And then the next page, this is just sort of what my week looks like in my block. And then I've also included um, like my kids' school times and then some of their extracurricular activity times so I know when those fit into the calendar. Okay, so next I have my tab number two and this is where I have my daily routines. So I have my morning routines listed out, my afternoon routines, and then on the back side here, I have my evening routines. And this is what I use every day. You can see I've already done the morning. Every day as I accomplish these tasks, I just go through and sort of check everything off as I do it. At the end of the night, I take some spray away and a little cloth and I just wipe it down to start fresh the next day. So this has helped me stay on top of things so well, so, so well. <laughs> Next, I have tab number three, and tab number three is actually my weekly routine. So this is the part where you're going to spend either 15 minutes to an hour every day doing something that's going to bless your home or your family. My weekly routines very much differ from Marla's suggestions of weekly routines. I will have a video I'm creating all about how I modified the Fly Lady system to fit me, and I will be sure to link a card up here when that video is ready. But this is just what I do and I only spend an hour doing it. In my afternoon routine, you will notice that I made a spot for a one hour cleaning task. And that one hour of cleaning actually comes from this weekly routine. Monday, I have, you know, this little block and these are all of the things that I have to get done in the hour and then I also have a little note under every day what laundry I'm doing that day. So for example, on Monday I clean my master sheets and my towels and so that's my laundry focus that day. So it's all seven days of the week. It just goes through, shows what I need to do in the hour I have. I set a timer and as I complete those tasks, again, I go through and I check them off and there's a little check box here, week one, week two, week three, week four, week five, so that I can just stay on top of it for the month and then at the end of the month, I can wipe away those little check marks. Now these I actually, I didn't make, I customized them, but I bought the templates on Etsy. So I will link that below if it's something you're interested in. And then right behind my weekly cleaning routines, I actually have a special routine. On Sundays, I clean my car and purse. And if you saw my extreme home declutter video about my car, you will see why I have now decided to spend one hour every week cleaning my purse and my car because I cannot let it get it to that point again. And so this is just what I do on Sundays to clean out my car and my purse. So I have just a specialist there that outlines like, Morgan, you need to do these things or your life is going to end up in shambles and you will be starring on an episode of Hoarders. <laughs> Next I have tab number four 
And tab number four gets into my zone cleaning routines. Again, my zone cleaning is slightly different than Marla's and what she recommends. She recommends having five zones. I have seven because my house just can't do it in five. And so I realize my limitations and I have seven zones. But what they are is I have my zone, zone one, living room, entryway, stairs, and halls. So I have the zone, what rooms it covers, and then all of those cleaning tasks that I need to do in order to do my zone cleaning. And you can see I have all of them, zone four, zone five, zone six, and then zone seven. So all the way to the end, I've got all of my zones and my tasks listed out in tab number four. Tab number five is actually for meal planning. Marla always suggests having a section of your binder where you can control your grocery list or your meal plan, maybe keep some recipe ideas. And so what I have here is I have this weekly meal plan sheet and this came from the same packet that the cover of my binder did, this weekly meal plan. So again, that's linked in the description bar. Um, so what I have days of the week, breakfast, lunch, dinner, I will go through and I add the date on this little apple here. I actually have theme, like theme nights for each of my meals. That's a trick I learned from The Food Nanny. If you haven't heard of The Food Nanny's cookbook, I will be sure to link that in the description. It's super amazing. If you're not a cook like me and you have no idea what to make your family for dinner and you have to do it literally every night until you die. <laughs> Her cookbook was really good at just helping me get started to know what to make and when. Again, I'm very detail oriented and if it's not literally spelled out for me, I can't do it. I have here my meal plans. For example, here's one. Here's our meal plan for this week filled out. Let me take this out for you. So these are our dinners for this week. So Sunday I have crock pot night, Monday meatless or Italian, Tuesday is taco Tuesday, Wednesday nights we're pretty busy, we have activities and things so we do something quick and easy or leftovers. Thursday is a comfort food or a classic recipe. On Friday, we either eat out or we make homemade pizzas. And then on Saturday is a grill night. We'll do something on the barbecue. So you can see that's all filled out. I add my dinner and then in parentheses at the end, I make sure to make a notation of where that recipe is if it's in one of my cookbooks. If it's not in a cookbook and I just found the recipe online, I actually go through and I print that recipe out. I find one that looks good and I will print it out and then I actually will put these in a recipe binder so that I have them for the next time we wanna make that dinner. So the other thing in my weekly meal plan is actually our grocery list. Now this looks daunting, I'm sure. Let me take one out, I'm sure you can see it better if it doesn't have a glare on it. This list has been a project of love. How long have I been married? Seven years? For the last seven years of my life. <laughs> so. What it is, you can see each of these little colors is a different category of groceries. So things like vegetables, canned foods, fruit, frozen foods, snacks, drinks, um, personal care products, cleaning products. It even goes on to the back for um, baby products and then things for our dog. And then everything in black is what I typically get at a grocery store or if I use Walmart grocery pickup. Those are things that are in black. Everything is red is what we always buy at Costco. And that's what I mean when I say it's literally taken me years to put this list together. I keep all of my grocery lists and as I notice patterns of us repurchasing the same things or the same ingredients or purchasing the same thing at the same store, I update sort of this list and then print off new ones. And so this way I can literally just go through and see what we're out of in my kitchen or as we run out of something and I just put a check next to that box and I know what store I need to go to to get it, what I need to get, how many. It's been the biggest lifesaver, like the biggest lifesaver. I also have this free printable from the Penny Pincher and it talks about can I freeze that? And so if you have maybe a freezer in your garage and you know if you shop at Costco but sometimes everything goes bad before you get to it, it talks about what you can freeze and then how to prepare it to freeze and then how long you can freeze it for. So I thought this was just super helpful to have so I threw that in there as well. The last tab in my binder is my emergency family binder even though it's not a separate binder. <laughs> it's sort of my emergency family section 
And Marla recommends having a special tab in your binder that has, again, the names, addresses, and phone numbers of all of your family members. Just in case you should ever need to reach them and you don't have your cell phone available, have that in your binder. She also suggests including obviously the emergency 911 phone number, but other emergency numbers such as the police, the fire department, your local hospital, gas, water, and electric in case there's a leak or you need it shut off or something's wrong. So you also want to include the names, phone numbers, and addresses of all your doctors. So that could be your primary care doctor, your OBGYN, your children's pediatrician, as well as your vet. I mean, those are kind of the general numbers, but it's got like our family information, but this is ours. And then the last thing we have in here is our neighborhood meeting place. If there's ever some Something wrong in our home or there's you know we can't be in our home or if there's an emergency and we're not allowed to go home we have a special neighborhood meeting place so the name the phone number and the address of that meeting place is um, important to include in there as well we also have in here family pages and it's it's called family 411 again it's all from the same home binder template that I bought this cover from. So it's linked in the description and I'm trying to see what I can I can't show you. <laughs> okay, so next we have these family 411 sheets. So on that sheet, it has our home address, our home phone number, and then it has every member of our family. It has our name, our birthday, social security numbers, driver's license phone numbers, emails, and then cell and work phone numbers. And if there's an emergency and somebody needs it and maybe our brain's kind of too frazzled to remember, we can just go here. Another piece of important information she thinks that you should include in here is your children's school information. So the school name, the address, the phone number of the office, the principal's name and email address, as well as your child's teacher's name, phone number, email and classroom number. So those are all important things to include in here. So I have both of those for my kids. Next we have, I have babysitter notes. And again, it's just sort of another, let me show you this. I'm gonna cover up all of this information here. It's just sort of a 411 for babysitters. So whenever we have a babysitter, I just open up the binder and I leave it open on this page. It has our home address, both mine and Chandler's cell phone numbers, and then it has notes about our kids. So it has how old they are, any allergies they might have, what time their bedtime is. There's a spot where you can leave special notes. Maybe they have a lovey or a stuffy that they sleep with every night that you want to include. My kids have to sleep with white noise, so I have turn on the white noise machines on. And then there's like an in case of emergency, call this family member. It also has a box for what is okay and what is not okay for your children to have or do while your babysitter's there. It also has a page for your health insurance and doctors, just for medical, dental, and vision. The last thing we have in here is a sheet for pet sitters. Now it's very similar to the babysitter sheet, only it's all about your pet or multiple pets if you have them. So again, it includes your home address, the emergency cell phone numbers. There's also spots as well as on the babysitter sheets for where we'll be. So you can put like, you know, this movie theater or restaurant, the address and the phone number, and then what time we're expected to be home. So you can write that on there as well. It has, you know, your pet's name, what type of food they eat, when they eat, when they go for a walk, where they can go to play, and then any special notes and then special instructions. So special instructions might be, you know, a list of the vaccines that they're current on. We also have our dog microchipped and so her microchip number is listed in here. And then also in case of emergency, her vet's contact information is in here. And then lastly is just sort of her feeding notes. And so this talks about our dog, her name, her birthday, her breed, what color she is, um, how much food she gets every day, if she gets wet food, and then sort of her temperament. If you were to have to describe, you know, maybe your dog bites small children or something, you wanna be sure to include those in any pet sitter notes. So that's it, that's baby step number three. That's our control journal ready to go. Again, your control journal is not going to look like this right up front. You're probably not gonna have all this information. You're not gonna have all of your routines ready, but it's something to work on and build as you progress through the baby steps, through your routines, and through the Fly Lady system. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, leave me a comment about what you're including in your control journal and how you're doing on this Fly Lady journey now that I know how to respond to comments on YouTube. <laughs> I really enjoy getting them and just getting to meet you and talking with you. So 
As always, if you're interested in following me along on this journey, be sure to stay tuned and I will see you in my next video.